So to continue with the fifth, sixth, and seventh design factors um, and a, a discussion of acid, we need to talk a little bit about specific gravity or the definition of specific gravity. So the specific gravity of acid can be defined as the ratio of the weight of a specific volume of acid to the weight of an equal volume of water when measured at the same temperature. So less acid in water equals lower specific gravity and ultimately that uh, translates into lower operating voltage. More acid in water equals higher specific gravity and higher operating voltage. So for all you battery guys out there who um, used to test batteries with a hydrometer and the, the lower the reading on the hydrometer, that would equate to actually a lower voltage reading on the battery with a, with a voltmeter. So the, you know, why is specific gravity important? Well, as I noted earlier, specific gra higher specific gravity leads to higher voltage. Higher, high, higher voltage equals higher pressure. Higher pressure equals more heat. More heat equals more plate corrosion, and more corrosion equals plate shedding. So essentially, heat kills batteries by accelerating grid corrosion. So proper specific gravity for a given battery is determined by the application it will be used in, taking into account operating temperature and desired end of life characteristics. Typically specific gravities higher than 1300 um, are generally used by suppliers who wanna cheat on specifications. So earlier I had said you need the acid to be able to continue the discharge to get the total amount of capacity or a higher amount of capacity out of the active material that's in that battery. If I use higher specific gra gravity, I can maintain that discharge for a longer period of time. Uh, if I go too far, I'm gonna over discharge that battery and I'm not gonna be able to discharge that battery very often. So often you'll see uh, suppliers using acid 1330, 1350 or higher. And really that's just um, a way to uh, put on your battery label that you've got a 100 amp hour battery when really if it was, if you were more responsible, you would use a lower specific gravity, uh, produce a battery that would live longer, but that you would ultimately have to rate a little bit lower. So higher than 1300, usually used by suppliers that uh, like to cheat on their specifications. However, high specific gravity can also be used effectively in consistently cold climates. So if I'm gonna put a mission critical battery bank in the high Arctic or down in uh, Antarctica to support uh, mission critical applications, I can take into consideration that the temperatures there are a lot colder uh, and therefore I'd wanna raise the operating temperature of that battery to do so, I could use higher specific gravity. But when adjusted for temperature, um, the actual uh, uh, battery voltage will be reduced because of the temperature. Heavy cyclic applications or traction battery applications will, it's not uh, uncommon to see specific gravities of around 1300. Obviously in the automotive market, we typically see uh, 1280 specific gravity gravity and that translates into a fully charged battery of around 12.8 volts. Um, the same battery used at mid latitudes or in very hot temperatures might be shipped out with only 1260 specific gravity. Um, UPS and standby batteries with high momentary discharge requirements uh, typically have a specific gravity of about uh, 1250 and then general standby applications such as power utility um, long duration backup renewable energy systems might utilize specific gravities as low as 1215. When selecting a battery for any given application, some of the effects of high or low specific gravity to be considered are, higher specific gravity will deliver more available capacity and higher initial capacity, uh, shorter life, um, there's less 
space required because you have higher energy density because you're using higher specific gravity. Um, you get uh, a better ability to sustain high momentary discharge rates. Uh, high specific gravity is less adaptable to float applications and you'll get higher standing or higher self-discharge rates because higher specific gravity, like I said, is more pressure. You got the molecules running around faster in there, so the battery will be discharging at a faster rate. Uh, lower specific gravities will give you less available capacity or lower initial capacity. Uh, lower specific gravities will typically provide you with longer life. Um, if you can, if you have lots of space, it's not a big deal, but you'll have more, you'll require, you'll need more space um, uh, because lower specific gravity delivers uh, lower amounts of total capacity um, because of the lower energy density. Uh, you'll get lower momentary discharge rates. You'll be more adapt, it's more, lower specific gravities are more adaptable to float applications. And obviously with lower specific gravity, your batteries will be self-discharging at a slower rate. Okay, so those are our seven main design factors. And as I said uh, at the beginning, um, I hope through the video that you can get a basic or general understanding of how these seven design factors are utilized to produce a battery suitable for any application.